Hi, AppSec engineers. Welcome to this week's episode of Security Engineer Interview Questions. I look at popular security engineering interview questions from multiple sites like Glassdoor, Indeed, and so on, and compile this list every week. This week's question is going to be, what are the biggest AWS security vulnerabilities? So we're going to be looking at this. We're going to be going into one specific vulnerability, and we're going to be looking at some demos from our platform, appsecengineer.com. Let's get started. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter, where we are going to be posting constantly useful content around cloud native security, Kubernetes security, DevSecOps, AppSec, and many more interesting topics. This week's security engineering interview question is, what are the biggest AWS security vulnerabilities? Now, AWS is probably the largest cloud provider that we have right now. They have hundreds of different services ranging from cloud compute services to database services to machine learning to you name it, they probably have some computing services or something related to the service that you want. Now, if you look at AWS and security, they've actually had a very strong security track record. Most of their services are certified and compliant and have multiple layers of security accreditations. But even beyond that, AWS has actually been pretty strong on the security front. They've hired some of the best security engineers in the business. They have a great sensibility for security and what their customers want on security. A lot of government entities are on AWS, which gives you an idea of what kind of uh, security initiatives they might have taken. That, ha that being the case, AWS has actually proved itself as a pretty strong uh, security service provider in terms of the cloud. However, most of the security issues that we find on AWS are not really from AWS itself. It's mostly from misconfigurations that customers end up deploying on AWS. So in essence, what you typically have is when I deploy something to AWS, I may, might make some configuration issues or some kind of configuration vulnerabilities that might lead to my account and my stack getting compromised in the process. That's really what's likely to happen with AWS. So among the most common set of AWS security flaws that we typically see, these are some of the common ones that we'll see. And you'll see that there's a common pattern that repeats across most of these flaws that I'm going to be talking about. The first one is, of course, the big one, which is S3 buckets, right? You've seen news reports all the time that talk about how S3 buckets tend to get, uh, you know, they have information that's leaking, have data that is available publicly and things like that. This is largely related to misconfigured access control. It's not that S3 itself is vulnerable. S3, in fact, has got a ton of controls that can add security to it. And today, a lot of these are done by default. But a lot of times you will see that customers tend to misconfigure some of the access control on S3 buckets and store some sensitive information on publicly available resources. And this is a problem when it comes to some of the uh, AWS security issues that we've had in the past. The other one that you also see uh, often, again, this is not as common today, but it used to be pretty common back in the day, is subdomain takeovers where an orphaned uh, S3, uh, uh, an orphaned C name or some kind of a subdomain was uh, linked to a previous S3 bucket and now it's not linked to anything. As a result, you have somebody that could take over that subdomain by adding their own S3 bucket with that same name and things like that. That was a pretty uh, common flaw as well. You see a lot of bug bounty reports on subdomain takeover, although not all that common uh, today. It's a little less common today, but it still happens with uh, some S3 and CloudFront resources. The other is a pretty standard stuff, right? You have apps that may be vulnerable to an injection flaw or some kind of deserialization flaw or something like that, and that could have vulnerabilities that could then privilege escalate onto your compute infrastructure and things like that. Host and network security hardening flaws, these are common, right? Things like, let's say you've not hardened your host or you have not con done network access control with your security groups and NACLs and things like that on AWS or on your VPC, that could also have security issues. And all of this typically, one of the things that we see a lot, at least from the vulnerabilities with apps, is the privilege escalation, right? This is the big one, right? Most of the big AWS security breaches like Capital One and so on have happened because 
of privilege escalation uh, because they've been able to escalate privileges they've been able to steal tokens from a particular role and then use that to access uh, the aws account especially if the access to that particular resource was a large scoped access or star access which is essentially all access to a set of resources this is the big problem that we're going to see and this is what we're going to be looking at in our demo in this demo we're going to be looking at performing a server-side request forgery attack against an application that is hosted on an aws ec2 server now this ec2 server is also uh, has access to s3 buckets and some other resources within aws through the assume role service now we're going to attack the application and then perform the SSRF attack and then try and access the metadata service within AWS to be able to extract the credentials that have been injected into that EC2 server to be able to access other AWS services. Now using these credentials, we are going to escalate privileges and gain access to some information that we as the attacker shouldn't have access to. Now all of this this lab and this demo is actually part of our AppSec engineer AWS EC2 and network security class, which is part of our overall AWS security learning path. So we have tons of these hands-on labs and exercises that you can learn from and really understand how to get deep into the guts of AWS security as a subject itself. So I hope you look forward to the demo. Here it's going to get started with our demo on AWS SSRF against EC2. So let's get started with our EC2 attack lab. So in this lab, we're going to be deploying our infrastructure, our stack, which is going to consist of an EC2 server. It's going to also consist of a VPC and things like that. But the fundamental thing that we're going to do is attack the EC2 server, compromise the EC2 server with the server-side request forgery flaw, and then we're going to see what we can do with it. So that's really what we're going to be doing in this lab. So we're going to be using Terraform for automating and deploying things. Now Terraform is a tool that works across different cloud providers that can help you write automation scripts, infrastructure as code scripts that you can use to deploy things on the cloud like AWS or Google Cloud or any other cloud provider as well. So first of all, let's look at our code and we're going to be looking at the EC2 compromise scenario here. And let's talk about how that works and why that works the way it works. So first of all, let's start with the resources. Now we're going to be provisioning an EC2 server. We're going to be provisioning an instance, which is a T1 micro instance. So here, what we're doing is we are creating a stack, which is going to be a Linux server. If you look at the type of server, we're going to be using the Ubuntu 18.04 image of the server. We're also deploying some kind of credentials. So this server is going to be able to talk to other AWS services. So if you look at what are the other AWS services it can talk to, let's look at the IAM policy. You will see that this server can talk to S3. But the problem you will see automatically is that it has star privileges on all S3 buckets, which is obviously dangerous, right? It probably does not need star privileges on all S3 buckets, but it does have it. So this is a problem we're going to see how this problem results in the breach actually or results in the privilege escalation when we actually run the lab aside from that we are creating an s3 bucket where we are dumping some sensitive data in this case we're dumping some credit card numbers they are here in this lab is that we want to steal the credit card numbers and access it from s3 now you'll see that the s3 is not made public which is actually good but because of this flaw, you'll see that even though we have a decent ACL on the S3, it's not really good because the EC2 server gives you access to that particular S3 bucket. So this is our example, and we're going to be deploying this stack, and we're going to be compromising this app very shortly. So now that we've seen what this stack is actually doing, it's just deploying a server and a bunch of resources. It's also deploying our application to that server. Now let's go ahead and start to actually deploy it and run our compromise. Now I'm going to start deploying my stack pretty soon. I'm just going to do Terraform, apply. So it's going to deploy it and you should see some deployment information coming up pretty shortly. So it's going to create all the necessary resources. You'll see that there are a bunch of resources that are getting initialized and these are going to be created on your AWS account. So it's going to be creating all of these things. You can see it's creating our web server and very shortly it should have finished deploying our web server as well. So you'll see that it's provisioning some data sets. It's also loading our app and our app should be ready once it's deployed as well. 
Now the app has actually been deployed and you'll see that we have our app that is running on port 3000. Now it's time to attack it and start pulling out some data from the application. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to sign up as a user, but as an attacker, what I'm going to do is in my sign up fields, I'm going to add some malicious payload that is going to try and do something for me. That's actually going to help me compromise this application. So what we're going to do is we're going to load a link HTML tag in our sign up form that is going to pull the credentials from our AWS environment. So one of the questions I'm generally asked, especially when I do these kind of attacks is, Hey, how do you know this is there? So a lot of these attacks are processes of discovery. I'm going to give you the diluted version because I want to get right to the point, but the point is that you can do multiple types and techniques to discover this sort of thing. So that is what I am doing in this case and directly getting to the point of attacking it and compromising it. So please keep that in mind. So I'm going to sign up for this system. So I'm going to sign up with my name by argav a at b.com. I'm going to select some password. Now, instead of the remarks being something genuine, I'm going to add this payload. Now let's see this particular payload that I'm going to add. This payload is going to hopefully do something interesting for me. So I'm going to say link rel attachment href 169.254.169.254, go to metadata, IAM security credentials, pull this role. So in fact, for instance, what I could potentially also do is just go to each of these parts one by one and then pull out this information and then finally do this. So if I was doing it in the real world, I would do get to this point and then get the name of the role and then add this role to actually get this final step. But since I already know it, I'm just going to directly access this. So if this works, if this attack works, or if this payload works, it should essentially pull the response from this particular file and dump it inside my PDF. And that's what I'm hoping would happen. Now I sign up and now I log in with my email now that I've signed up. So I'm going to log in and I am going to generate my PDF. Now, when I generate the PDF, there is nothing on the PDF. In fact, I can download the PDF or whatever it is. There's nothing on the PDF. So let's actually go ahead and download this PDF. And uh, so I'm going to download this PDF and I'm going to upload it back into the server. So I'm going to upload this back into this particular server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a file and I'm going to upload my gen PDF creds file so that I can actually do some analysis against it. So let's see what I can do. So I've uploaded my file here. So now that I have uploaded my PDF file, I need to use binwalk in order to actually extract and decompress the PDF and see what's actually inside the PDF. So I'm going to do app get update and I am also going to install binwalk. So binwalk is a useful forensic tool. I'm going to do apt get install binwalk and it's going to hopefully install binwalk with all the necessary dependencies. So you'll see that binwalk is being installed on my machine and soon I will be able to decompress this particular file, which is gen PDF underscore creds dot PDF. So now binwalk is installed. Now I'm going to run binwalk against this particular file. So here I should find my PDF file. I'm going to run binwalk dash E and it's going to decompress and generate a directory. You can see the directory on the side. Now let's actually start looking at each of whatever is extracted from that PDF in this directory. You'll see that there's a lot of metadata information, some font information and so on. But as you're walking through this, you should start to see at one point our data actually emerge from somewhere. And you'll see here in one of these files, you see that you have this data. So whatever you put in the link rel attachment, which is the metadata URL, you will find access key ID secret. Now this is what we want. We have successfully compromised and gained access to AWS credentials and using these credentials, using these three parameters, I can start to access S3. I can start to access S3 because remember this server has star privileges on all S3 resources in my environment. So let's actually do that. Let's copy and paste this in a terminal. 
I'm going to do export. So you can do this on any machine, but I'm just going to do it in the same machine. So by creating environment variables, what you're doing is you are using that particular environment variable to access AWS. So you would probably be confused because AWS configure also gives you access to AWS. But when you set environment variables like so, you're actually using these AWS credentials to access your AWS account. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to just set some credentials here quickly. So this is going to be this. I'm going to set the secret access key of this, which is going to be my string here. And this is also going to be my token. So when you are using it as a role, you need to also have a token. So I'm going to do export AWS session token. And I'm going to copy this entire string. And finally, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start accessing as this account. So let's actually peg this terminal session to the top and let's see what's happening. Let's see what user I'm accessing this. At. So if I do AWS STS identity, this will tell me what kind of user or role that I'm accessing the AWS account as. And I shouldn't be the admin account. You'll see that I'm accessing it as the SSRF role. So we have successfully performed a privilege escalation attack against AWS because you'll see that I'm accessing with whatever role was injected into that EC2 server, which means now I can start to list out my S3 buckets. And I can also get my credit card information from this S3 bucket, which is what I want. So if I do AWS S3 LS, S3 colon this, you should see that it lists out my credit card number. And finally, I am going to steal that credit card number. So I'm going to say AWS S3 CP, this particular bucket slash credit card numbers dot txt to our local path. And now it's going to dump all the credit card numbers on my local path. And you see, we've finally been able to successfully perform a privilege escalation attack leading to sensitive information getting compromised on our AWS account. So this is a very powerful technique. This is pretty much the same technique that was used in the Capital One breach to compromise their S3 resources and customer data as well. So this is Pretty powerful, happens all the time. It's very real world in terms of the attack. And you can see how we were able to leverage server-side request forgery in order to do this, in order to actually perform this attack. If you like that video, you should consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you want the best quality education for AppSec, cloud native security, Kubernetes, DevSecOps, threat modeling, and a constantly updated library of amazing courses with amazing hands-on labs, you should get a subscription for appsecengineer.com. Subscriptions are available for both individuals and teams of any size that you can access on appsecengineer.com. Please check us out.